Dear students, now let us understand the concept of money, commercial banking and the central bank. What is money? Money is a good that acts as a medium of exchange in transactions. Classically, it is said that money acts as a unit of account, a store of value. Now, money is anything which can serve as a medium of exchange. If we peep into the history, we will find that all sort of things like animals, agricultural produce, metals have been used as a medium of exchange. But today, it is prominently the paper money, that is the currency notes, which is being used as a medium of exchange. Now, let us see the evolution of money. Earlier, we used to have the barter system. And under barter system, the things were exchanged for the things. And these things used to play the part of money. But due to inconveniences of the barter system, the need for introducing something as a medium of exchange arise. So here took the development of the money. And this development has passed through various stages depending upon the time, place and circumstances and with the progress of civilization of the mankind. In the hunting stage, animals were used as the money. Various cattle like cows, goats, etc. were used as money. But again there were drawbacks with respect to indivisibility, lack of storability, lack of portability and the standardization which was not there. Because of all these deficiencies, the commodity money was introduced. Various commodities like shells, skin, rice, tea, etc. took the form of money. And the people who were living near the seashores used shell, fish, etc. as the medium of exchange. But again, there were certain limitations like lack of uniformity, portability and indivisibility. Because of which, the metal money was introduced. There were some metals like gold, silver, copper, bronze, etc. which the mankind started using as a medium of exchange. But again, there was a lack of uniformity, lack of portability and it was so difficult to count the small pieces of the coin for the big transactions because of which the metallic money was discontinued. The coins were introduced in 700 BC in Greece and these coins were used to bear the king's step. But again there was disadvantage of safety. There was no safety for metallic money and it was really difficult to count so many of the coins for the larger transactions. And thirdly, there was also difficulty in availability of the coins. These coins also lack transferability from one region to the another region. And because of all these discrepancies, all these disadvantages, and especially after industrial revolution, the paper money was invented. Paper money emerged as the token money. Paper notes were issued by the government and it was economical and portable as compared to metallic money. But again, it had certain limitations like lack of durability, difficulty in handling the big amounts and because of which the paper money further lent to invention of the plastic money. Now if we try to jot down the time frame of the invention of the money then we can see that earlier we were having the barter system and then up to the half of 18th century the medium of exchange were goods with the increasing use of metals and particularly the gold and silver. Around 1750s, the paper money was introduced in the organized manner and for the very first time. Then around 1750s till 1930s, the gold and silver were prominently used. Thereafter, from 1930 onwards, most of the countries use paper money and still they are using the paper currency as a prominent and nearly exclusive medium of exchange. Why so? What is the reason behind that? It is mainly because of the phenomenal rise in the volume of the transactions needing more and more of the money but why gold and silver were found wanting? The main reason was their limited supply. 
because of which gold and silver continued to make their momentum now let us shift on to banking what is banking banking is defined as the accepting for the purpose of the lending or investment of deposits the money from the public repayable on demand or otherwise and withdrawable by checks draft otherwise generally the banking activities include the acceptance of the deposits owned by the individual or by the entities and lending the same amount to the other entities or individuals in order to earn the profit and directing them to the most productive uses according to section 6 of the banking regulation act 1949 a bank includes collecting checks bills etc from customers dealing in foreign exchange issuing guarantees indemnities letter of credit traveler checks etc extending remittance services such as demand drafts mail transfer telegraphic transfers etc acting as an agent for the central and the state government and the local authority or any other person in respect of collection of the taxes pension payments income tax consultancy etc it also includes rendering of the services like the merchant banking leasing mutual funds credit cards etc providing various facilities like the safe custody lockers acting as the executor administrator trustee and exchanging mutilated or soiled currency notes as per rbi rules now what are the functions of the commercial bank we can divide the functions of the commercial bank into four broad categories the primary functions which we normally called as the traditional function that is accepting the deposit and lending secondary functions including the agency functions and general utility functions developmental functions including help in mobilization of the savings ensuring the balance growth development of the priority sector encouraging right type of the industry implementing the monetary policies of the government and other or modern functions including e banking e trading factoring services merchant banking and again unlimited number of the functions being performed by the banking organizations now let us discuss these functions one by one the first and the foremost function is the acceptance of the deposit the bank usually accept three types of the deposit number 1 current account deposit normally these accounts are opened by the business class the deposit in this account is payable on demand and these can be drawn by the check without any restrictions there is no interest which is being paid on these deposits however the bank offer various other services to current account holders by charging a nominal fee and the most important of this service is the check facility the second type of account is the fixed or term deposit account these accounts are not payable on demand and they do not enjoy the checking facilities the money once deposited in these accounts can be withdrawn at the time of maturity of the fixed period if the person wants to withdraw the money before the fixed period that is before the maturity date then a certain penalty is levied the other form of fixed or term deposit of the accounts is known as recurring deposit accounts wherein the depositors makes the regular payment of the agreed sum exceeding over rupees 100 per month for a stipulated time period interest is being paid on the deposits in these accounts the third type of account is savings bank deposit account these accounts combine the feature of both current account and the fixed deposit account they are payable on demand as in the case of the current account and also the check facility is provided and they enjoy the feature of fixed account in the sense that the interest is paid on this deposit account but obviously the rate of interest on the saving bank account is lesser as compared to the fixed deposit account the second and another important function of the bank is advancing loans normally the bank gives three types of the loans number 1 the short period loan these loans are for a period of 6 months to 1 year they attract high interest rates 
second is the medium term loan which normally ranges from 1 year to 5 years and the third type is long period loans normally these ranges are for more than 10 years besides this the bank also provide bank overdraft bank overdraft is a temporary facility which the bank allows to its trustful customers under this facilities the customer can overdraw from their deposit accounts bank charges the interest on overdraft overdraft basically is an advance given to the customer to overdraw his current account another type of loan facility is the cash credit bank allows credit against immovable property and the interest is charged by the bank in this arrangement an eligible borrower is first sanctioned a credit limit up to which he or she can borrow from the bank this credit limit is determined by the bank's estimation of the borrower's credit worthiness however the actual utilization of the credit by the customer depends upon his withdrawing power the withdrawing power depends upon the value of the borrower's current assets which comprise mainly of the stock of the goods raw material semi manufactured or the finished goods the receivables or other security which the borrower provides discounting of the bills this is the income source of the bank to discount bills of the exchange the bank normally charge some charges for discounting the bills being provided by the business class to the bank the bank discount only reputed and the clear bill of exchange the another important function of the bank 